Once upon a time, in a land filled with cacao beans and questionable beverage choices, the epic saga of chocolate unfolded. So, what are you waiting for? Let's go! Picture this. The cacao tree, basically the celebrity of rainforests in Central and South America, the Olmecs, those trendsetters of Mesoamerica, were probably sipping on cacao concoctions and saying, hey, we liked it bitter before it was cool. Fast forward to the Mayans and Aztecs, the cacao connoisseurs who didn't just drink their chocolate, they frothed it up and threw in chili peppers and vanilla for that extra zing. Oh, and forget gold coins, they used cacao beans as currency. I'll take a latte and a sign of financial stability please. In 1528, there was a guy named Herman Cortes, your typical explorer looking for gold, but stumbling upon something way more exciting. That's right. Chocolate, the accidental treasure of his epic journeys to the Americas. Legend has it that Cortes, in the midst of his quest for bling, received a surprise gift from the Aztec Emperor, a cup of cacao. So Cortes, armed with cacao seeds and a newfound appreciation for Aztec hospitality, sauntered back to Spain. He burst into the country like, guess what Spain, I found something way better than gold and it's called chocolate. Now the Spanish being the sweet toothed geniuses they are decided that drinking plain cacao was for amateurs. They threw in sugar and honey, basically turning it into the world's first chocolate syrup. Chocolate then became the it thing among the rich and fancy folks. It was so posh that even Catholic monks were sipping on cacao, probably chanting hallelujah. Fast forward almost a century later, it's 1615 and French King Louis XIII decided to spice things up in the royal realm by marrying Anne of Austria, the daughter of the Spanish King Philip III. Now, Anne being the chocolate fairy godmother she was, brought the magic beans of joy to the royal courts of France. Surprise France, your taste buds are about to go on a cacao roller coaster. Following France's lead, chocolate decided to backpack its way into Britain. Suddenly there were chocolate houses popping up like Willy Wonka's secret franchise. And as chocolate fever spread across Europe like Nutella on a pancake, every nation wanted in on the cacao action. The 19th century sees chocolate getting its act together. It's not just the liquid game anymore. Thanks to conjuring, uh, no, not a dance move, and throwing in some milk powder, we now have solid chocolate bars. Companies like Cadbury, Nestle and Hershey's join the party, turning chocolate into the rock star of snacks. Hold on to your cacao beans though, because in 1828, the chocolate scene got a makeover. Enter the chocolate press, the James Bond of confectionery gadgets. This magical contraption was like a cacao ninja, sneakily squeezing cacao butter from the roasted cacao beans, leaving them drier than a comedy show in a library. The result? Fine cacao powder that was the Beyonce of the chocolate world. They took this cacao powder, mixed it with liquids, and poured the concoction into a mold. The era of chomping on raw cacao beans was over. Fast forward once more to the 20th century, chocolates are getting fancy with fillings, pralines, and chocolate covered everything. Artisanal and premium chocolates strut onto the scene saying, move over basic bars, it's time for the good stuff. And that brings us to today, where chocolate reigns supreme in all its glorious forms. If you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe, it's free and it helps us a lot. Till next time, thanks for watching and I hope you have a lovely day.